Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. There were a few things we learned about WBC champion Deontay Wilder from his devastating knockout of mandated challenger Berman Stavern. First, Wilder is not afraid to use his surgically repaired right hand, using it effectively to score the first two knockdowns and it assisted with the final knockout sequence. Second, we saw that left hook briefly in the knockout sequence and it snapped Berman Stavern's head back nastily. Now this is a punch that Wilder has been working on since his right hand began to give him problems. Thirdly, Wilder proved again he does not lack for confidence and after the fight he called out Anthony Joshua once again. Unfortunately he did lower the tone a bit by suggesting AJ was juicing. That wasn't really necessary given AJ has never failed a test. Uh, but we also learned, and this is in relation to Berman Stavern, Berman Stavern is a spent force. He is now 39, he's dropped another fight, he's only had two fights in three years, he came in overweight, barely threw a punch, and really he had no business being in the ring. So the WBC, it really messed up by making him the mandatory challenger. The win was what it was. It was about as good a performance as Deontay Wilder could have hoped for. If he had have eked out an unconvincing points win, I'm sure we would have been all over him and the knives would have been out. So I am prepared to give Wilder his due for the way in which he dealt to Stavern. It was a good statement and he needed it, he really needed it to generate some buzz and boost his profile because it's not the best. I mean, there were some commenters in my post-fight review that thought I was giving Wilder too much credit and that beating a faded and overweight Stavern didn't mean much. But I think I gave him about the right amount of credit for the manner of the victory, because it was impressive. But let's not get it twisted. One win over an opponent that should never have been the mandatory challenger in the first place, it doesn't all of a sudden make up for three years of modest opponents for Wilder. So it is time for him to step it up. And he says he wants to step it up. But as I say, what it does do, it gives him some momentum and it will help with the business side of boxing. Most casual fans, when they see a replay of the knockdowns and knock out, they wouldn't have an inkling that Stavern was a walking heavy bag waiting to be dispatched. What they see is a brute force and brutality of the knockout. This fight, while it may not have lifted Wilder's stature much among seasoned boxing fans, it'll go a long way with some of the casuals, particularly in the United States. The knockdowns and knockouts, they're easily packaged into a highlight sequence for mainstream media to play, and it has been. It's been all over ESPN elsewhere as well. So importantly, it gets a few tongues wagging about future fights and what the potential could be, you know, Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker, and others. So before I get to a few thoughts on Wilder and the champs, a few boxers have weighed in on the performance against Berman Stavern. Delian White, C on screen. He wants Wilder at the O2 Arena in London on February 3rd. White's promoter Eddie Hearn has that venue booked already. Money may end up being the sticking point though, as Wilder wants $7 million, or at least a signed agreement that Anthony Joshua is the opponent after his stablemate White. Wilder also noted quite hilariously after the fight uh, that kings fight kings, not peasants. It's, it's actually quite a good line, and I can't help but laugh at it. But I do like Dillian White's confidence. He still wants that fight with Deontay Wilder. And judging on the respective performances of White and Wilder in recent weeks, I think you'd have to say Deontay Wilder would go in as firm favorite but it's heavyweight boxing you can't rule anything out or anything in so i mean would have to see if that fight was made luis ortiz meanwhile he would have been in the ring with wilder had it not been for a failed drugs test which is allegedly related to a medical issue so he had a message for wilder from the barclay center in brooklyn hey wilder i'm here i'm here for you you want to see me i am the champion you know the WBC, it has not banned Ortiz just yet, so it could be possible that the next fight for Deontay Wilder is the Cuban. That is, if he passes whatever hurdles he needs to with the sanctioning body. 
the Gypsy King Tyson Fury, he also tweeted about Deontay Wilder's win. At first glance, it does appear complimentary, but when you actually look at it, it's clearly a subtle dig rather than a genuine compliment. Saying, great performance from Bronze Bomber, just destroyed a top heavyweight, the big boys. Air to watch out, whatever he hits, he destroys. But what of Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker? So I'm not sure that either will have been quaking in their boots at that performance. They are just simply levels above Berman Stavern, who barely threw a punch in the fight and collapsed from the first right hand landed. Probably says uh, more about the condition of Stavern than anything. But it also proved Deontay Wilder has power. Real power. Both Parker and Joshua, they have much better foot movement and the ability to slip or catch jabs. Stavern, he was content eating the jabs for the most part. It wasn't a great strategy. So a fight against either of the other champions, it'll be a much tougher prospect for Deontay Wilder. And it won't be one-way traffic. There will be punches flying back in anger. And that would probably actually influence the way Deontay Wilder fought. He clearly went into that after about the first two minutes he decided there was no threat in Stavern and he just let loose. And the result, well, it was obvious. I guess one question that popped up uh, after the performance against Stavern is how would Parker or Joshua cope with taking a straight right hand to the face from Wilder, who again proved he's got legitimate power? I mean, the rest of the technique, it might be a bit patchy, a bit sloppy, but he does have a good right hand and he's got legitimate equalizing power. I mean, the reverse is also true. Say if Anthony Joshua, if he landed clean on Wilder, how would Wilder hold up? And while Parker's power has been questioned by some, he can still crack. It is heavyweight boxing. He's shown he can lay guys out when it counts. But recently, he's obviously been taken to decision a few times, a few questions raised. But I think in the ring with Deontay Wilder, Joseph Parker would back his power, his speed, his agility, and he would fancy his chances. But that's why I think, and this is what I've been saying for a while, all these unification fights, for me, they are 50-50 fights. Because all three champs bring something the other does not. And some of it will come down to how defensively responsible these guys are. But also, it could all be over with one or two punches. It's very intriguing. What do you make of Wilder and his chances against Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker? I know it's, you know, a little bit premature, but obviously these questions have sort of come up as a result of Wilder's call-out and the nature of that performance. How do you think Anthony Joshua would respond to Deontay Wilder and similarly Joseph Parker? What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. That's boxing underscore squared. I'm out.